What's up YouTube? It's been a couple months since my last video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Douglas. I'm a second year medical student in Poland at Poznan University of Medical Sciences and I used to be an English teacher. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, is it worth it to study in a Polish medical school? First, a quick update. I'm back in Texas for the summer. We finished our final exams for year one a few weeks ago in July. After that, I had a mucosil removed from my lower lip. Mucosil is a backed up salivary gland. So for a few weeks there, my lips were actually bigger than they already are. I've also been hanging out with the animals at home. But I took your every word to heart. I'm doing pathoma and I'm working on my farmer's tan. Back to today's topic. In another video, I give some reasons why I chose to study medicine in Poland, save time, save money, international experience, and a good record of matching to US residencies. In this video, I'm going to dive into the other side and discuss some of the challenges that I've encountered during my first year of medical school in Poland. I will be focusing today on three big challenges that I encountered during first year. Number one, school organization, two, exam review policies, and three, student loans. I will link these topics in the description below so you can jump around a bit if you'd like. Just to be clear, this video is not meant to be a rant. It is meant to be insightful for students who are considering studying medicine in Poland. I'm hoping that it might also initiate dialogue with the school about some issues that they might address in future semesters. Before we get started, I will answer the question up front. Is it worth it to study in a Polish medical school? The answer for me is yes, absolutely. However, I do not think that Polish medical school is for everyone, and I'll get into my reasons shortly. In sum, I would only recommend this route for students who are highly flexible and adventurous. Here we go. Challenge number one is school organization. PUMS can be disorganized at times, especially in regards to class scheduling. Basically, our class schedule is prone to change on a monthly, weekly, and even daily basis. Handling these changes requires some spontaneity and flexibility on your part as a student. I'll give you some examples. In fall semester, we had two classes scheduled about a mile apart with a 10 minute break to traverse this city mile. The lecturer in the second class was not very understanding if we arrived a few minutes late, as we inevitably did because it's a city mile in 10 minutes. Uh, the professor would say, not my problem, and actually mark us absent. Fortunately, the professor in the first class was a bit more understanding, and she allowed us to leave a few minutes early so we could make it to the second class on time. On the bright side, we have been told that our classes in the future will be scheduled a bit closer together. Another time, we had an opening lecture scheduled for 9 a.m. in a hospital in downtown Poznan. All 75 or so of my classmates were at this hospital in downtown Poznan at 9 a.m. The lecturer was not there, and around 9.15 a.m. we received an email saying the lecturer is actually in another hospital in another part of town, and could we please be there in 20 minutes? This has happened on exam days as well. We once showed up for an 8 a.m. exam and were told that our class schedule was inaccurate and that the exam was actually scheduled for 11 a.m. The message here is you can't take it personally. The dean's office is juggling multiple classes and multiple programs even, so there may be last minute changes and there may sometimes be mistakes. You've got to be flexible and willing to adapt to a somewhat unpredictable class schedule. Challenge number two is exam review policies. Some professors, not all, choose to withhold exams from student review. This means that after we've taken an exam and that exam has been scored, we are not allowed to review the answers to see what we got wrong. To be clear, these are internal exams created by our professors and not national standardized exams. The decision lies entirely with the individual professor and department as to whether students can review the answers after they've sat the exam. 
of course it can be quite frustrating to study for weeks leading up to an exam, score say uh, 70%, and then be left wondering where you missed those points. And how can you improve if you're not sure what you got wrong? I don't feel it's productive to speculate on why professors choose to withhold exams from review, but it does seem that showing us our mistakes would be the best way to help us learn. Fortunately, the no review exam policy only applies to some departments. It is by no means a rule that you will encounter here. A related story, one of our final exams for one of the big first year courses, one of those exams was recently discarded. We did roughly six months of labs, lectures, and written tests leading up to the practical exam. On the practical, I scored an 84%, which I was quite pleased with because it was a big practical. According to the syllabus, our practical exam score would then be averaged with the NBME, which we took in early summer, and we would have a final score based on those two scores averaged together. When COVID happened, our professor decided to discard all of the practical exam scores because several students had failed the practical and she wanted to allow them to pass. My thinking is this, if you want to be merciful and allow some students to pass, then just give them the lowest passing mark, say a 60%, uh, but discarding the final practical exam score for all of the students it erases all of the work that we did for months. So on the NBME, I earned a score of good, which I suppose is a C or maybe a high C. And I was one point away from better than good, which may be a low B, perhaps a B minus, somewhere in there. Now, if my NBME, my good score, one point away from better than good, if this were averaged with the practical exam on which I scored an 84, then I would likely have been in the upper bracket on my final transcript. Of course, it's just one class and I could have studied more and performed better on the NBME. But you should be aware that surprises like this are not uncommon at pumps and you've got to be willing to accept them. This brings us to challenge number three, student loans. Challenge number three is my least favorite of today's topics, but it's also a very important one. I regularly receive emails from students about Sally Mae student loans and how they might finance their education in Poznan. To sum up this section in one sentence, student loans are not handled transparently here. I'll give you some examples. For both fall and spring semesters, 240 US dollars was deducted from my Sally Mae loans by a school representative. This deduction was above what I believe to be the total cost of attendance. So 480 US dollars for the academic year. The finance office in Poznan explained that 240 US dollars is a normal deduction for liability insurance, but that I was indeed double billed and I should get a refund of 240 US dollars from the loan officer. We had this conversation in January of 2020. It's now August and I have yet to receive a refund of $240 from the loan officer. Furthermore, I asked the school for the name of the insurance company that provides our liability insurance as well as a policy number or a plan so I could see what exactly was being paid for. The school has been unable to provide a name and the loan officer has not responded to any of my emails. If we are being billed for liability insurance, it seems to me that we should at least be given the name of the provider and a policy that shows what is covered. On a similar note, the school loan officer transfers our money from US dollars into Polish złotys. So I asked both the loan officer and the finance office in Poznan for an invoice with some proof of the exchange rate that was used. Again, I received no response from the loan officer and the finance office in Poznan says that they can't get a hold of him either. In future semesters, I hope the school does resolve this and issue students invoices with some proof of an international exchange rate perhaps that was used to convert our money from US dollars into Polish złotys. As it stands now, I'm left wondering about some deductions, where and why money was taken out, and how it was converted into Polish money. Finally, my fall semester Sally Mae student loan was dispersed by Sally Mae on August 31st, and I didn't receive a refund from the school via the loan officer until October 4th. So my student loan sat in the loan officer's bank account for about five weeks, 
before he sent that money to the school, which then gave me the refund for living expenses. I am working with Sally Mae now to finally get this issue resolved. Initially, they had asked me to work with the school directly. Because that didn't work out, Sally Mae did agree this summer to get involved. So I'm hoping to have an update for you guys sometime by the end of August. And I will, of course, share that with you in a future video. As before, this is my least favorite of the challenges, but I do feel it's important for potential students to be aware of how their student loans might be handled here. Also, be prepared to finance your living expenses for two or three months up front in case your loans are held up for several weeks as mine were. So that wraps up my list of challenges that I've encountered during my first year of studying medicine in Poland. I'm hoping this video is insightful for those of you considering a Polish medical school. For me, these challenges are well worth it, and I am grateful that I chose to study in Poznan. PUMS allowed me to begin medical school right away after finishing my prereqs and sitting the MCAT. We do study under some great professors here, and the experience of living and studying in Poland is exceptional. I'll say it again though, I would only recommend med school in Poland if you are highly flexible and you've got a sense of adventure. If you're wondering about language or culture, I personally enjoy these kinds of challenges and that's why I haven't discussed them in this video. Buying groceries, taking trams across town, ordering coffee in Polish, these experiences are all part of the fun of living and studying in Poland. As always, thank you for watching. I love seeing questions in the comments below. If I've left anything out or you've got questions about a new video perhaps, let me know and I will do my best to address them. Take care and see you in year two.